Okay, in this video, um, we're going to look at the return of the blood to the right atrium. Now, this is going to be through the vena cava, but it's going to be through the inferior vena cava, which means uh, the vena cava below that of the heart. Okay, so basically it's looking at the return of blood from the feet, the legs, the abdomen, everything below uh, the heart. Now the reason why that's important is because blood has to return to the heart um, against gravity. Okay, and as we've said in previous videos, the flow of blood in the vena cava and all veins is very sluggish. And um, this sluggish uh, movement of blood due to the very low pressure in veins can be an issue if you have to get blood back up to the heart from the lower body. Um, so there are um, a couple of mechanisms that can aid the return of blood uh, to the heart from uh, the lower part of the body and that's what this short video is going to be about okay we're just going to look at two things really um, the first one then um, is this one now I've got the heading as valves and the contraction of muscles in the leg now the contraction of muscles of uh, or in the leg we're talking about the calf muscles okay those in the lower leg um, this is often referred to as the skeletal muscle pump or the muscular skeletal pump the other way around um, um, but it does involve and can only work uh, when we take into account the valves that are present within um, the veins so what's happening here is uh, if we look at the left hand diagram first we've got uh, veins running in between calf muscles okay and when the calf muscles contract like all muscles they become shorter and fatter and when that happens you're going to get the muscles squeezing against the vein and what that does is that it will force blood up the vein um, through the valve that has become uh, open okay now what also can happen is you can get a little bit of backflow of blood shown by these two red arrows um, so what can happen is the valves at this position the sort of lower position can close and prevent the backflow of blood okay so you get the contraction of the muscles and ultimately it causes blood to move upwards uh, through the vein or the vena cava through the uh, open valve <clears throat> when the muscles relax uh, they become longer and thinner and therefore don't press against the vein as much so what can happen is uh, if the valves weren't present uh, talk about the top one now um, the blood could actually fall all the way back down the the blood vessel but you get closure of this valve uh, which prevents backflow of blood again okay so what the muscles are doing in effect are creating small localized increasing sorry small localized increased uh, levels of pressure within the vessel and that causes the blood to move upwards the valves prevent the blood from moving backwards down the the vein okay because it is all going against gravity so these veins prevent blood falling backwards okay so um, you can uh, aid the return of blood back to the right atrium by sort of wiggling your feet uh, or walk in uh, whenever you do that you're actually causing contraction of the calf muscles and that actually increases uh, uh, or aids the return of blood back to the right atrium okay so that's the uh, musculoskeletal pump and the involvement of the valves now the next one um, I've got a couple of diagrams here that uh, just very basically show uh, the arrangement of in blue uh, the vena cava okay so this is the vena cava coming up from the lower body and it's uh, entering 
uh, this brown box which is the chest okay and within the chest you've got this circle which is representing the right atrium okay so vena cava in blue chest in brown and in green we have the right atrium okay now the two diagrams are the same with regard to the vena cava but in the diagram on the left we have the chest shown smaller than in the diagram on the right and we've also got the right atrium shown smaller than that in the diagram on the right now what's happening with this is um, this diagram on the left is actually showing exhalation uh, because the chest volume basically is lower than the one on the right the right diagram is showing um, inhalation okay so what is happening is uh, we're looking at really the pressure changes in the chest specifically during inhalation okay because when you inhale you increase the volume of the chest and therefore you reduce the pressure. So this is another example of the volume pressure relationship we've spoken about before. Okay, so in the diagram on the right, we have a large volume in the chest and therefore a lower pressure. Okay, and this pressure can actually become negative. It can actually create a sort of a suction effect, if you like, uh, as you breathe in. So let's uh, start with the diagram on the right, really. Um, as we've said, there's low pressure in the chest. OK, now what that allows to happen is the atrium, uh, the right atrium, to actually um, expand or relax a little bit more. OK, because there's not so much pressure being exerted on the atrium, uh, when it relaxes and fills with blood, it can actually uh, fill with blood a bit more because it can expand more because there's not so much pressure from the chest being forced on it. OK, so basically with this diagram now, um, we've got a, a large volume of chest. That equals uh, low pressure. Okay, uh, and when we say low pressure, it can it can, we can say it becomes negative. That means it sort of creates a vacuum or a suction effect. Um, so the pressure being exerted on that atrium is low. So there's low pressure uh, on atrium or right atrium okay and what that means is that um, the actual volume of uh, right atrium can increase more okay so we can get bigger and uh, what is happening is when that atrium uh, expands very big again it can create this suction effect which can draw up the blood uh, through the uh, vena cava so blood drawn up due to negative pressure okay so this negative pressure um, is like a suction effect and uh, that's been allowed to happen because the volume of the chest is very high uh, and therefore the pressure is low and that allows the atrium to expand a bit more and create this suction uh, effect drawing uh, the blood uh, into the right atrium okay so there's the situation there now on the left hand diagram of course 
here you're actually uh, breathing out so the vol is low of the chest and therefore the pressure uh, within the chest uh, is high and because of that you can see that the atrium cannot expand as much as in the other diagram um, so when you're breathing uh, breathing out you you don't get as much blood being drawn up because there isn't this negative pressure sucking the blood up okay so there's no negative pressure okay so uh, less blood uh, drawn up into the right atrium okay obviously blood is still going into the right atrium uh, because you've got this musculoskeletal pump working but there's less of it because you at that point you're actually breathing out okay but as soon as you're not breathing in um, you can then get sort of more blood being drawn up into the right atrium okay i hope that made sense that is the end of the video um, so there's just the two ways in which um, blood returns back to the right atrium so make some summary notes as usual on this um, to suit your learning uh, style um, and so they're useful for you